All right, cool beans and cool tricks. Here we go. All right, so we got these cool tricks with roots, and uh, it would be to your best interest to go ahead and maybe just pause the video and write these three uh, tricks down because we're gonna we're gonna use them right now for for the following uh, roots. And um, so check this out here. The the first guy, the square root of a squared. Well, the square root of a squared is equal to the absolute value of a. And I'm going to, you know, rules are only so good unless you have examples. So if my explanation isn't all that much satisfying to you, then wait till we do the, the examples and then I'll go back over the rules and then maybe be like, ah, I see there, right? But, um, you know, let me just go over the rules just real quick now, but we'll, we'll apply them though, of course. Okay, so the square root of a squared is just going to be the absolute value of a and this is review real quick the the absolute value means it just makes a positive okay so that's so that's what um that's what this does right here okay so the absolute value if i could spell absolute value let me try that again there okay, so the absolute value makes the a positive Um, you know, maybe like we'll just say um, it's the absolute value is going to make our answer positive. Makes our answer positive. Okay, so, so that's all like is going to do right there. Now, now watch this right here. If I take the nth root, the nth root of a to the power of n, it's just going to be the absolute value of a, given that n is a positive even integer. Okay, so if it's in this format, but and if n is an even and if it's positive number, the answer is just going to be simply the absolute value of a. And I'm going to show you guys why these rules work as well. You may not uh, care that much though, but maybe there's someone to know. Well, why does that work though? You know, and I'm going to show you just a little bit there. And what about this? If if it's in this format again, but if n is a positive odd integer, it's just going to be a without the absolute value. Okay, so let's do some examples here, and let's see if we can go to town here. Okay, so by looking at our cool tricks here, see how this one is in the form of our first one right here? Okay, so since a is our 15, our answer right here is just simply going to be the, the, the absolute value of 15, which is just 15. Okay, and you know what though, but you, I mean, you could have done this the longer way, which is this. I mean, if you wanted to think about it this way, you could have done 15 squared. F 15 squared means 15 times 15, right? Not that I probably recommend this though, but you know, just to show you why it is 15. 15 times 15 is 225. Don't forget about that radical. And then if you take the square root of 225, that's 15. So notice that this route took longer, but we got the same answer. But here, by using the cool shortcut or the cool trick, you can just get 15. Okay? All right, let's come over here. Uh, let's do the square root of negative 12 squared. Again, this is in the same format as our first rule. So it's the absolute value of negative 12. And remember, it always makes our, our answer positive. So really, our answer is just going to be 12. That's what absolute value does. But uh, why couldn't it be negative 12? Well, because look, if you actually do this the long way, doesn't this mean negative, negative 12 squared means uh, negative 12 times negative 12? And negative 12 times negative 12 is a positive 144. And the square root of 144 is 12. And what do you know? Look. We're getting the same answer. That's what's so cool about this. So the tricks are awesome, but I'm showing you why it works. So see, I mean, see how if, if, if you take and you expand it out and you take the square root, you're going to get the same answer. So it, it would be to your best interest to learn or, or to recognize these tricks. All right, so that means you can apply them right there. Okay, uh, part C. Okay, ah, the square root of y squared. So that's just like the first example right here, right? So the square root of, of y squared, so that means it's just the absolute value of a, or in this case, y. So the answer here is going to be the absolute value of y. Okay? Now, you, you, you can't put just y. No, no, no. 
it has to be the absolute value of y. And uh, because the answers won't be the same if you were to do um, different negative cases there, okay? This guy right here, again, this means the absolute value of negative y. Again, th this fits the first rule again, okay? Which is just gonna be y. Okay, so now check out uh, letter E. And uh, so one of our rules, and, and let's just come back up here again, okay? If it's in the format of the nth roots of a to the power of n, if n is a positive even integer, if these are both positive, then the answer is just the absolute value of a. And take a look at what we have here. Aren't both of these numbers even? Yes. Okay, good, right? So since these are both even, the answer is just the absolute value of, of what's inside right here. Okay, let me just show you that again right here. Okay, it's just, it looks just like this. This is even, this is even. So if they're both even, the answer is just the absolute value of a. Bam. So come down here, and the absolute value of negative 5 is going to be 5. Sweet. Now, the other rule was this. If both of these ends are odd, it's right here. If, if n is a positive odd integer, then the answer is just simply a. Okay? So I think we have that on our next case right here. See how these are both, uh, they're both odd. So the answer is just going to be a, which is just negative 5. Okay? And of course, you can do it the longer way, okay? Which is like if you want to expand negative 5 to, to the power of 5, <laughs> I want to do all that though. That's negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, and then take the, the fifth root of that. You're going to get negative 5, but you know, math is all about finding where those shortcuts are, but also if you want to know what they mean. Okay, let's do this guy right here. Okay, we'll ignore that negative sign for just a moment. Notice that both of the ends are negative. So wouldn't this answer just be the absolute value of what's inside here? But we have to bring down that, that negative sign. So the absolute value of negative 3 is a positive 3. But then again, we bring down that little negative sign. So that final answer is going to be uh, negative 3. OK? Uh, let's see here. Let's go down, down to uh, letter H. OK. You're like, what the heck, man? It's not the same as our rules, okay? Remember, because our rules that we've been doing, they look like this, right? A to the power of n, okay? But notice that these numbers are not the same now. So watch this nerdiness and a little bit of crunchiness as well, okay? What we're going to do is that we want this 4 and this 8 to be the same number, okay? So I'm going to manipulate this. So watch this. Let me just show you, and then I'll explain, okay? I'm going to rewrite this as the fourth root, or the negative the fourth root of m squared to the power of 4. Okay, so look at this. Think of this as our n, and think of this as our n. N notice that they both have a power of n, right? And notice that, look, m squared to the power of 4 is m to the power of 8. Reviewing very quickly our rules of exponents that you learned in 95. Uh, a to the power of n, and if I raise that to the power of m, then, that's, then that equals a to the power of n times m. So I multiply these guys right here, and that's what I did right here. See, 2 times 4 is 8. So now that these are the exact same number, I drop down my negative. And this whole thing just becomes the absolute value of m squared, right? If you go back up to our rule right here, if they're both n and if they're both even, then the answer is just going to be the, the, the absolute value of a. Okay, so uh, what about this guy? So the, the absolute value of, of um, m squared is just going to be m squared. You say, well, how do you know that? Because look, if I square an m, if I square any number, it, it, um, like, isn't that result always going to be positive? I mean, think about it. 4 squared is a positive 16. Or how about negative 4 squared? That's a positive 16. So, so it doesn't matter if I plug in a positive or a negative number right here. 
it's always going to be positive. So that's why I can drop my absolute value bars. Okay, let me explain that one more time. The absolute value of m squared is just, is just m squared. I can drop the absolute value bars because the square makes the m positive always. Okay, and that's why, because of this little example right here. So then you drop down the negative sign, and that's why the, the, the final answer is going to be negative m squared. Okay, let's do these last two examples here. Uh, okay, so again, these are not the same, but, but I can rewrite this by saying that's the third root. Now watch this. 3 times what is 24? Well, 3 times 8, right? So I'm going to put an 8 inside and then put a 3 on the outside. So now these numbers are the same, okay? Because I'm trying to make this look like our second rule. And so, so since now they're the same, and since they're odd, right? If n is odd, then the answer is just going to be x to the power of 8. And look at this guy right here. I want this 6 and this number to be the same. So 6 times what is going to be 18? Well, 3, right? So I can rewrite that as the 6th root of y third to the power of 6. You see? Since the ends are both even, then the answer is going to be the absolute value of y cubed. And notice this time, I cannot drop the absolute value bars. Okay? Because when it's an odd number, when it's odd, it is possible to still get a negative answer, but when it's an even um, exponent, then it's always going to be positive. So basically, this is our final answer here. You have to keep the absolute value bars, whereas up here, you can drop them because the exponent is even.